Hey guys, on here. Yesterday I got to go see Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves thanks to the Amazon early screenings that were hosted across the country over the weekend. It was a lot of fun, man. This was my most anticipated movie of the year after those trailers that released last year. I was really swept up in them, man. Now I know Wizards of the Coast, that's a whole other debacle, a whole other controversial topic in and of itself. But as far as the movie goes, I wanna give you guys my thoughts on the film. I'm not gonna give you any spoilers or anything like that, but as a D&D player, this film really captures what is in your head when you're playing in a very grounded way. And by grounded, I mean grounded to the world of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a fantasy setting, there's magic, there's spells, there's dragons, there are bird people, dragon people, there's all kinds of stuff, man. And one thing I'm very curious about is how this is going to gel with people who aren't familiar with D&D. Because, I mean, I still got a lot of questions. Like, how do you even play D&D? What do you do? Like, how do you win D&D was a question that I got, like, a week ago. It's interesting. So I'm very curious to see what people going into this are going to expect a very, like, straightforward fantasy tale, like something like Lord of the Rings. Or are they going coming into this expecting, like, something a little you know, self-referential, something a little playful. And i that's what this is. It's very much so a great representation of what I feel like the players who are playing at a table, like imagine is happening in their, in their game, the way their characters act, the way things play out. There's this attention to detail, to bringing the world to life, the mechanics of the, the classes, the mechanics of the spells, of the creatures and the way things kind of work and play out and live and breathe. The creatures they bring to life that are straight from the Monster's Handbook is wild and a lot of fun. And this cast really brings these playful characters to life. And they're very archetypical, like especially with their backstories, their personalities and all this. They very much fit into the mold of what most people kind of craft their characters around. The story really centers around Chris Pine's character, who is kind of like the self-appointed leader of this whole thing. Chris is playing a human bard named Edgen Darvis, who is a former Harper. And once that wasn't paying the bills, he turned towards thievery. And that's kind of where things kicked off because he stole something he probably shouldn't have. And there were consequences to that. An early on par partner of his is played by Michelle Rodriguez, part of the core uh, crew that starts to build off as they branch out and collect more people into the fold. She plays a human barbarian and she's great. Uh, her character's name is Holga Kilgore and she's not the brightest in the bunch, but she's there for her people and she will knock some heads and she has some great comedic timing in this. Chris Pine is charming as hell. Great choice for a bard, but Michelle Rodriguez really plays a barbarian beautifully. <laughs> Simon Amor, who is a sorcerer, a human sorcerer, played by Justice Smith. Um, he's a little skittish, which is kind of par for the course, because that's like every Justice Smith character I've ever seen him play. If you've seen him play any character ever, he's playing that character, but now he does magic. It's pretty much the exact same. Along their journey to collect their crew, they come across a tiefling druid played by Sophia Lillis. And then there's the highlight of the entire movie, in my opinion, who is Zank Riendar, who is a human paladin played by Reggae Jean Page, who just, I think every moment he's on screen, he easily steals the show. And the way he's written and the way he plays the character is the perfect representation of what most paladins are like. You know, very steadfast, earnest, honest, you know, a little bit of a wet blanket is just this beautiful contrast that makes every interaction hilarious. <laughs> like, he was easily my favorite part of the movie and got some major laughs out of me. Then we have one of our primary villains, Hugh Grant, who is a human rogue slash con artist who's a former partner of Edgins, and he's kind of become an obstacle between the main group and their end goal. Daisy Head plays Sophina, who is a Red Wizard of Thay, who is also one of the antagonists of the movie. We see her in the trailers. She really nails this, like, malicious elegance in a very fun way, and I love just one, every scene that she's in, because she always plays it very straight and very serious. And the way most groups are, she doesn't work well or tolerate a lot of the shenanigans that are going on in the movie. And it's it's quite great. <laughs> and it's just a really interesting story. And I like the way that it's structured, because it's very much so like you would structure and start off like a one-shot campaign. You start off with your small group as you expand into the world. You start to add more and more people to your party. You meet different players across the thing and they kind of join your cause. Oh, to get to this thing, you need to do that. 
But to do this, you need to do this. But to do that, you'll need to do this. And it becomes this kind of like great way that they encapsulate what questing in D&D is actually like and the way that the characters interact, operate and play and plan and things don't go according to plan. And then you got a thing up of another one. And then some things that you don't really think would work randomly do because maybe you just lucked out on a good roll. Like it really has this sense that the mechanics of the game is happening somewhere behind the scenes we're just not seeing. This is definitely a fun action fantasy comedy and I think it nails it. When it comes to the action set pieces, I thought they set them up beautifully. I love the aesthetic. I love the variations in the locales that we visit. We go to all kinds of different places and names and all kinds of stuff that if you're you know, a player and whatnot might be familiar to you. And even if you're not, they are varied, they're interesting, they're gorgeous, they're well crafted. I think the CGI works real well. There's a mix and match of practical effects as well for a lot of different elements. And I really love the way they brought this in. And one thing that really kind of surprised me is some of the hand-to-hand -hand combat in this. The action is really well shot and choreographed. There's like one or two fight scenes in this that really kind of blew me away in a way that I just didn't expect was going to play out in this. Like the level of choreography and timing and speed that went into it was just thrilling. It's got dungeons, it's got dragons. I think it's got pretty much everything a D&D fan could ask for in one of these adaptations. Easily, hands down, no competition. It's the best version of this we've gotten in live action and on the big screen, easy <laughs> by a long shot. I had a blast. I laughed my ass off. It was so much fun. They, they brought this world to life, the creatures, the landscapes, all of it. And I really wish it was longer, dude. I would have loved to have spent more time in this world and got to see more, but it was a nice one shot. I don't know if they plan on coming back to this or doing something else with these characters. There's a bunch of fun little running gags. And I just, oh my God, dude, I, I had fun. I had a lot of fucking fun with this movie, man. Is it perfect for what it's going for? I would say, yeah. The dialogue, the portrayals is very much so like you're that player in the chair coming up with the dialogue. Sometimes it doesn't always feel the most natural. And that's one of the things where I feel like there might be this disconnect from players and, you know, people casually film goers going into to watch this movie. They're like, oh, wow, this dialogue is really weird. But I was like, to me, it's just like, oh, it just feels like the the weird shit you would come up with when you're just trying to like on the fly, role play your character. You don't get to write down and plot out all of your stuff to sound like the smartest person in the room. Sometimes you fumble your way through dialogue and it shows and I think they capture that. I just want, I'm very curious to see how people land on this, you know, cause it's gonna be really interesting because for me, a lot of those are choices because it, to make it feel more authentic. So I don't know. I'm very curious to see what the overall reaction to this movie is gonna be, especially from non d, &D players. But for me, who plays, who kind of knows this world enough to really catch a lot of things that they did, I think they really nailed it. And I would love to see more from this creative team and more from this world and love to just see the world of D&D &D and even just its offshoots get just more love and attention, man. Amazon gave a Critical Role a film deal. So let's get on that, man. I have heard that Critical Role has cameos throughout the movie and there was one that I think I caught, but there was so much costuming involved that I wasn't 100% sure. And it just makes me want to go back and rewatch this because there's plenty of Easter eggs hidden throughout this thing. Fun references to other D&D properties and stuff like that. Most notably in the trailers, we saw a group of people who are dressed exactly as the uh, main party from the old 80s Dungeons and Dragons cartoon who are in the film. There's all kinds of little things sprinkled throughout this. So it just like, it definitely entices you into a rewatch and I can't wait to get into that. But in the meantime though, feel free to go check out my reactions to The Legend of Vox Machina seasons one and two. Both are in full on the channel here to check out my first watch through that. I have not seen campaign one. So all of that has been a surprise adventure for me and it's been really wild. One of my favorite reactions and watch alongs that I've done through a series so far. So go check that out. By the time you're seeing this video, I know most people will not have seen the movie because it's not out to the public yet. Like I said in the beginning, I only saw this because of the Amazon early screenings that they had. I know our theater was packed, so some people have seen this. Most people probably haven't. If you have seen it, I would love to know what you thought. If you haven't seen it, once you have, come back, 
and let me know what you thought of the movie because I'm very, very curious. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. We got more stuff coming your way here in the future and I would love to have you along for the journey. But that's all for now. And guys, before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan, Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yord Coriscon, Margaret Grace, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Raven McGann, Jeffrey Hale, M. Sephiroth, Jake Cantrell, Josh Lee, and Aaron Myers. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.